I, let's talk about that Judon conversation a little bit more. That was yeah. super interesting. And there's, I think there's some, we're, we're kind of piecing this together between a couple reports that were out there, uh, a little bit of what Ryan Pohl said on Hogan Johns yesterday, and then adding in actual footage of the conversations behind the scenes. So one thing that Pohl's told us yesterday, um, because Johnsy asked him, like, so it sounds like you're okay not getting them. And he was like, oh, well, hang on. You're always a little disappointed when you don't, you know, that competitive right. drive, like you, you want to get the deal done and you have Jeff King literally quoted on a open mic in this episode tonight saying, I think we're going to get it done. Right. He was talking yep. to Flus in that scene, right? Yeah. I think that was with Eber Flus. So like the front office thought they were going to get it done. Now I want to, as soon as this is over, I want to go back and rewatch that um, scene to really make sure I heard everything correctly. But I think I, I mean, basically it sounded like the bears had a clause in there that was if Judah, if they didn't get the contract done with Judon, he would revert back to new England. And you have Matt Feinstein who's in there. That's who the, for those that don't know, that's the guy who was in the office talking to polls, like kind of right at the end while they're sort of explaining and showing the context, why it didn't happen. And you have Matt Feinstein in there, you know, talking about they touch on the money a little bit, the cap, but he's like, okay, so third rounder for Judon, when you don't necessarily know how it's all going to work out from that point on versus you already traded your fourth round pick in this upcoming draft for Austin Booker for the next four years. And that type of context I thought was really smart and cool. And you could kind of, it, it was almost like, justification for it not getting done. Now, also, what's important here, Judon has not signed in Atlanta. Right. And there, I'm reading a story right now that's on ESPN.com where it's like it's suggesting he might play out the year and it might be his choice. So to me, putting this all together, it was there was no guarantee that a deal was going to get done if the Bears ended up getting Matthew Judon. And they didn't feel like third round, a third round pick they felt like that was too much value for only one season of his services. Well, well, how does it work, Hogue, with if you if if the Bears or the Falcons, now that the Falcons have Judon, and let's say he doesn't resign with the Falcons and then signs a big contract elsewhere, don't the Falcons get a pick back? Well, uh, potentially they do. You would potentially get a compensatory pick. But that is dependent on a lot of factors you have no control over or know right now. One is how much money. Um, it, it's basically a total sum of all the guys you lose in free agency versus the guys you sign in free agency. That's what determines your comp picks is as simple as, as I can explain a very, very complicated formula. But that's a long way of me saying there's no guarantee if you lose Jude on that you're going to get a pick back. What's interesting to me about it is that, and we've seen this with polls now multiple times, he has a price. This is the number. And he sticks to it he did the same thing with McGlinchey he could have you know when that when that uh mark went crazy for the right tackle he could have come up he didn't do it they ended up with Nate Davis what does he regret going you know if he could go back in time I mean the whole thing would change Darnell Wright wouldn't be here all these things but he the point is that he puts parameters on what he's willing to do and he sticks to him which is not easy by the way that is right. a, you know, when you get intoxicated by someone, you start thinking about what Matthew Judon, if he's healthy, could mean to this football team. I could, you know what, screw it. We'll do it. Uh, but he's, I mean, this is like a, a, a disciplined GM uh, that's, you know, do, is doing his operations consistently is what I'm saying. Yeah, man, I, I, wish, it would, I wish it would have happened, man. It, it, it really would have put this defense over the top. You know, I'm, well, I, I'm getting, I, I'm getting I, greedy. My eyes are but, getting big on the potential but, but, of this team. But okay, that, no, that's fine, and, and I, I don't disagree with you. But if there's a world where we're in April 2025 going into the draft, the Bears have traded their third-round pick, their fourth-round pick, right, and Judon – has now signed with a different team because right. he never signed an extension with the bears and Austin Booker barely played as a rookie because mm -hmm. there weren't enough reps to go around regardless of what the production is. And that you kind of heard 
polls talk about that. Well, if he gets 20 sacks, yeah, that, that would suck. But oh, but think about that the realistic possibility that that happens versus is it more like Yannick Ngakwe's season from last year? Like, which one of those is more likely? I, maybe it's somewhere in the middle. But my only point is like looking ahead to the future. It's very easy to say, oh, let's just put the chips in and get Judon. When six months from now, you might be looking at it like, I don't know if we really got the value for that. Now we don't have our third round pick. I know. Well, I, you- I would have I would have dried my tears of not re-signing Judon with my uh, Bears Super Bowl championship shirt. So I was, you know, just trying to balance that. <laughs> We're all sitting like the mayor. 